Hey guys, welcome back to Salesforce Made Simple. In today's video, we're going to discuss Salesforce flow record variables and how to use them to create records in the Salesforce database. So the benefits of using a record variable are that you can quickly reference any field of a particular record elsewhere in your flow, and they also allow you to properly bulkify your flow. So if you need to make 10 records at once, you can use record variables to do it without hitting DML limits. So I'm going to jump over to Salesforce here, and I have a very simple flow already set up. If you're not familiar with how uh, screen flows work or how they can work, uh, what I've done over here is I've created a single variable, this is not a record variable, called account ID. And what this is going to let me do is start the flow by entering an account ID from Salesforce. And so I have an account open here called the United Oil and Gas account. And I can pull this ID from the URL and I can simply pass it into the flow. So I want to point that out because it's important. Um, our very first get records element is going to use that ID to find an account inside of Salesforce. And so the first thing to know about record variables, which is not the variable that I just used, this was just a text variable, but a record variable can be created by a get records element. So that's number one, very important. When you are using a get records element to look up an account for an example, and you know here we're just going to find an account where the ID equals our text variable. But down here at the very bottom, when you're selecting how to store record data, if you tell Salesforce to automatically store all the fields, Salesforce will automatically create a record variable for you. And you can see that over here in the manager. Uh, a record single variable was created automatically from the get account get records element. So if I renamed this, for example, you know, I could call this get account element and then press done. You'll see over here on the left that the record single variable was updated to say get account element. So that's number one. You can create a record account variable by using a get records element and storing all the fields. And that's really helpful because if you were to go to a screen you could then reference that record single variable to display something like the name or the account ID. And so on this screen, I took a display text component here and I dragged it to the canvas. And you can see that I just manually typed some stuff in. So I said the account name is get account element name. And then I said the account ID is get account element ID. I could also say something like uh, the account oops, if I could spell, <laughs> the account annual revenue is type a colon, and then I'm allowed to insert a resource. So you see that there's an insert resource box here. If I click this, you can see that that record single variable is an available option for me to select. So I could click this, and this will pull up every single field on the account object. And specifically, it's going to tie these values, these field values, to the account that we looked up. So if I select annual revenue from this list here, you can see the syntax get account element dot annual revenue. And if I press done and then reopen it, it will save. But now when the flow runs, the actual account value will show up here. And I mean, we could pass in any account ID at the start using our text variable and then when our get records element runs it will use the text variable to find an account and then populate our record variable with all of those account values and one thing that's important to note here you can see how this says get account element if I were to change the get records back to just get account the flow will automatically update the syntax everywhere else in the flow so that's really helpful you know, I updated that, and if we go back here, we see that it's updated. So that's that's awesome. So I'm going to save this, and let's press debug and run it. Remember, when the screen kicks off, it's going to ask me for my account ID input variable. I'm just copying that from the United Oil and Gas URL here. I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard. I'm going to enter it here as an input variable. 
This is not our record variable, this is just a text variable. When I press run, we see that on the right hand side, the debug uh, details section shows that we found an account where the ID of that account equals the same ID that we passed in at the start. And then Salesforce automatically stored the values of the three fields that we referenced later in the flow inside our record variable. So that's the actual record variable. And then here in the display text, we were actually able to dynamically reference the name, the ID, and the annual revenue of the account that we found. And if we used a different account ID, you know, these values would change depending on which account we started with. So that's pretty cool. That's one way to use a record variable. But now let's talk about how to use a record variable to create an account in Salesforce. So we have this account, but let's say we wanted to add a contact to the account. What we could do, I'll go back to the manager, is create a new resource and the resource type will be variable and the data type will be record. So that's the second one in the list here. We can call the API name or we can name the variable contact record variable. And the object, if you had to guess, the name is contact record variable. So what would the object be? If you said contact, then you've been following along and you're absolutely right. So this is uh, Salesforce giving us the option of manually creating a record variable. So if you do the get records element, it will create it automatically for you. But if you want to actually insert a record into the database, you need to manually create your record single variable. And you can see that our variable um, for the record just lives under the first one that was made. And so this one is entirely blank right now. You could imagine that there's a contact and there's no name. Like if you visualize a spreadsheet and it's, it's a spreadsheet with uh, every column is a field name, so you know, first name, last name. All the columns and all the rows are empty right now. So what we need to do is populate some of the columns in order to insert that record into the database. And the way we would populate the columns, so to speak, inside of a flow is with an assignment operator. So if I drag this assignment operator to the canvas, I could say, um, what would I call this? Uh, enter contact fields, or maybe just assign contact fields. What we can do here is we can go one by one and set different field values for our contact. So I'm gonna click the variable, and you see our contact record variable that we uh, manually created is available here. So if I click this, all of the contact fields that are available on the object are now selectable. And in order to insert a record in the database, we need to make sure that we fill out the required fields. And so there's gonna be three fields that we fill in, but the first one we need to fill in is the account ID because contacts are related to accounts. So here we see that our contact record variable dot account ID equals, and now we need to provide an account ID. So we can select the value section and use our first record single variable to dynamically reference the ID. And if I just scroll down here, we'll see the account ID. So this is a really uh, kind of cool section of the video because we're using both the manually created record variable and the Salesforce given um, record variable. So Salesforce makes a record variable for us when we use a get data element, and we also manually created one. And here we use them together to assign the account ID of the contact. I'm going to add two more rows and again we're just going to select our contact record variable and I'm going to find the first name field. I'm going to repeat that process again selecting our contact record variable and then finding our the last name field because the last name field is required on a contact. So here we have the first and last name and I can just manually type these in. If we wanted to we could you know look at different account fields or use the flow to find other records in Salesforce to dynamically set these. But I'm just gonna manually type in the value Bob Apples for the first and last name of this contact. I'll press done. And then I'm gonna connect our screen to our assignment. So we created our record single variable for our contact, and then we assigned some fields to it. 
and now we just need to insert it into the database. So I'm going to drag a create records data element to the canvas and I'll call this create contact and here we're just going to create one contact record we are going to use all the values from our record and this is a, a variable and here I can just click the record and you see that our contact record variable is selectable here. I just select that, press done, and because our assignment runs before this create contact records, that means the field values are set and so that when the create records will uh, run, the Bob Apple's first and last name will be set along with the account ID. So let's press save and we'll run this one more time. I'm just going to make sure I have the account ID from our account for when the flow kicks off. And what we would expect to happen is that we'll get our account. Our screen will show those three field values um, from the account, the name, the ID, and the annual revenue. And then when we press next on the screen, our flow will run. It will assign the contact fields based on our assignment operator, and then it will insert that into Salesforce. So what we'll do after the flow runs is we'll go look here at these contacts and see if a new one named Bob Apples is created. So let's press debug. I'm going to insert the account ID, press run. So the first part of the flow worked great. We again found an account and we dynamically referenced the account field values using a record variable. And when I press next, the flow will run. And you can see over here on the right that the assignment operator ran. So our contact record variable uh, referenced the account ID. And we set the first and last name to Bob Apples. And then down below it, we were able to successfully create that record. That's shown there. So let's go to the United Oil and Gas account and refresh the page. Sure enough, there's a fifth contact whose name is Bob Apples. And he's been inserted into Salesforce. So that's how you use a record variable inside the Salesforce Flow Builder. I hope you found this helpful and uh, have a great day. Hey guys, hope you found that helpful. Let me know in the comments what other Flow videos you'd like to see and make sure to like and subscribe because it really helps out the channel. If you're interested in learning more about Salesforce Flows, make sure to check out my course on Udemy. There's a link in the description. It has over eight hours of in-depth Salesforce Flow tutorials designed to turn you into a Flow Ninja. With that said, have a great day.